Welcome to this lecture Nitrogen Uptake and Assimilation. Let us start with the general account. Nitrogen compounds are found in all plant tissues where they play key role in growth, reproduction and photosynthesis. On a dry weight basis, nitrogen is the fourth most abundant nutrient in the plants. It is an essential constituent of proteins, nucleic acids, hormones, chlorophyll and a variety of other important primary and secondary constituents. Most plants obtain the bulk of their nitrogen from the soil in the form of either nitrate or ammonia, but the supply of nitrogen in the soil pool is limited and plants must compete with a variety of soil microorganisms for available nitrogen. As a result, nitrogen is often a limiting nutrient for plants in both natural and agricultural ecosystems. The bulk of atmosphere, that 78% by volume, consists of molecular nitrogen, an odorless and colorless gas. In spite of its abundance, higher plants are unable to convert dinitrogen into a biologically useful form. The two nitrogen atoms in dinitrogen are joined by an exceptionally stable bond and plants do not have the enzyme that will reduce this triple covalent bond. Only certain prokaryotic species are able to carry out this important reaction. This situation presents plants with a unique problem with respect to the uptake and assimilation of nitrogen. The plants thus depend on the prokaryotic organisms to convert atmospheric dinitrogen into a usable form. The uptake and assimilation of nitrogen occurs through phases like nitrate uptake and ammonia uptake. Dear friends, let's now discuss nitrogen fixation. For this purpose, there are specific organisms called symbiotic nitrogen fixers in association with plants. In this association, the plant is identified as the host and the microbial partner is known as the microsymbiont. The most common form of symbiotic association results in the formation of enlarged and multicellular structures called as nodules on the roots or occasionally on the stem of the host plant. In case of legumes, the microsymbiont is a bacterium of one of the three genera that is rhizobium, bradyrhizobium or azorhizobium. Collectively, these organisms are referred to as rhizobia. Curiously, only one non-leguminous genus, that's Parasponia, which belongs to the family Ulmaceae, is known to form root nodules with rhizobia symbiont. Symbiotic nitrogen fixers, particularly legumes, contribute substantially more nitrogen to the soil pool than do free-living bacteria. Typically, a hectare of legume rhizobium association will fix 25 to 60 kg of dinitrogen annually, while as the non-symbiotic organisms fix less than 5 kg per hectare. Now, we will discuss the mechanism of legume rhizobium nitrogen fixation. The sequence of events beginning with the bacterial infection of the roots and ending in the formation of mature nitrogen fixing nodules has been studied extensively in legumes. Overall, the process involves a sequence of multiple interactions between the bacteria and the host roots and can be discussed in four principal stages with colonization, nodule initiation, invasion of root hairs and formation of infection thread and finally the releasing of bacteria. Let's first take the colonization and nodule initiation. Rhizobia are free-living saprophytic soil bacteria. The initial attraction of rhizobia to host roots appears to involve positive chemotaxis or movement towards a chemical. Rhizobia host specificity is determined when the rhizobia attach to the root hairs and must involve some form of recognition between cells involving chemical linkages that form between unique molecules on cell surfaces. In the case of rhizobia host interactions, recognition appears to involve two classes of molecules 
with lectins and complex polysaccharides. Lectins are small non-enzymatic proteins synthesized by the host and have the particular ability to recognize and bind to specific carbohydrates. In addition, ryc adhesin, a calcium binding protein, is thought to be located on the surface of a rhizobium cell. A rhizobium cell appears to be involved in the recognition mechanism. After colonization and nodulinization, let's take the invasion of root hairs and the formation of infection thread. In this stage, the bacterium penetrates the host cell wall in order to enter the space between the wall and the plasma membrane. Once the rhizobia reaches the outer surface of the plasma membrane, tip growth of the root hair ceases and the cell membrane begins to invaginate. The result is a tubular intrusion into the cell called as infection thread, which contains the invading rhizobia. The infection thread elongates until it reaches the base of the root hair cell. After the formation of infection thread, the third process enters, that is the release of bacteria. This is the final step in the infection process whereby the bacteria are released into the host cells. The membrane of the infection thread buds off to form small vesicles, each containing one or more individual bacteria. Shortly after release, the bacteria cease dividing, enlarge and differentiate into specialized nitrogen fixing cells called bacteroids. The bacteroids remain surrounded by a membrane called the peribacterioid membrane. As the nodule enlarges and matures, vascular connections are established which serve to import photosynthetic carbon into the nodule and export fixed nitrogen from the nodule to the plant. Now dear friends, let's have a look at the biochemistry of nitrogen fixation. Only prokaryotes are able to fix dinitrogen principally because only they have the gene coding for the enzyme dinitrogenase. The enzyme dinitrogenase has been purified from virtually all known nitrogen fixing prokaryotes. It is a multimeric protein complex made up of two proteins of different size. The smaller protein is a dimer consisting of two identical subunit polypeptides. The molecular mass of each subunit ranges from 24 to 36 kilodalton, depending on the bacterial species. It's called the iron protein because the dimer contains a single cluster of four iron ions bound to four sulfur groups. The larger protein in the dinitrogenase complex is called the molybdenum iron protein. It's a tetramer consisting of two pairs of identical subunits with a total molecular mass of 220 kilodalton. Each molybdenum iron protein contains two molybdenum ions in the form of iron molybdenum sulfur cofactor. The overall reaction of reduction of dinitrogen to ammonia by dinitrogenase is as it converts the dinitrogen into ammonia with the help of ATP. Note that the overall reaction for reduction of dinitrogen to ammonia by dinitrogenase utilizes ATP molecules. Note that the principal product of biological nitrogen fixation is ammonia, but that for every dinitrogen molecule reduced, one molecule of hydrogen is generated. Once nitrogen fixation is complete, nitrate assimilation takes place. Plants assimilate most of the nitrate absorbed by their roots into organic nitrogen compounds. The first step of this process is the reduction of nitrate to nitrite in the cytosol. The enzyme nitrate reductase catalyzes this reaction of conversion of nitrate to nitrite, where NADPH indicates either NADH or NADPH. The most common form of nitrate reductase uses only NADH as an electron donor. Another form of the enzyme that is bound 
predominantly in the non-green tissues such as roots can either use NADH or NADPH. The nitrate reductases of higher plants are homodimers that is they are composed of two identical subunits each with a molecular mass of 100 kilodalton. Each subunit contains three prosthetic groups with flavin, adenine, dinucleotide, heme and molybdenum complex. Nitrate reductase now converts nitrate to ammonia. Nitrite is a highly reactive and potentially toxic ion. Plant cells immediately transport the nitrite generated during nitrate reduction from the cytosol into chloroplasts in leaves and plastids in roots. In these organelles, the enzyme nitrite reductase reduces nitrite to ammonia. Chloroplasts and root plastids contain different forms of enzyme, but both forms transfer electrons from ferridoxin to a nitrite. Reduced ferridoxin derives from photosynthetic electron transport in the chloroplasts and from NADPH generated by the oxidative pentose phosphate pathway in non-green tissues. Nitrite reductase is encoded in the nucleus and synthesized as a precursor carrying a nitrogen terminus transit peptide that targets it to the plastids. Nitrate and light induce the transcription of nitrite reductase mRNA. Now plants can assimilate nitrate in both roots as well as shoots. In some plant species, both roots and shoots have the capacity to assimilate nitrate as nitrite and then as ammonia. The relative extent to which the nitrate is reduced in the roots or in the leaves depends on several factors including the level of nitrate supplied to the roots and the plant species. In many plants, when the roots receive small amount of nitrate, nitrate is reduced primarily in the roots. As the supply of nitrate increases, a greater proportion of the absorbed nitrate is translocated to the shoot and assimilated there. Even under similar conditions of nitrate supply, the balance between root and shoot nitrate metabolism measured by the proportion of nitrate reductase activity in each of the two tissues or by the relative concentrations of the nitrate and reduced nitrogen in the xylem sap vary from species to species. In plants such as cochlebur, that's xanthium, stromerium, nitrate metabolism is restricted to the shoot. In other plants such as lupine, that's lupinus albus, most nitrate is metabolized in roots. Generally, species native to temperate regions rely more heavily on the nitrate assimilation by the roots than do species of tropical or subtropical origins. After nitrate assimilation, let's have a look at the ammonia assimilation. Plant cells avoid ammonium toxicity by rapidly converting the ammonia generated from the nitrate assimilation or photorespiration into amino acids. The primary pathway for this conversion involves the sequential action of glutamine synthase and glutamine synthetase. Multiple forms of enzyme that convert ammonia to amino acids. Glutamine synthetase, that's GS, combines ammonia with glutamate to form glutamine. This reaction requires the hydrolysis of 1 ATP and involves a divalent cation such as magnesium 2 positive, manganese 2 positive, cobalt 2 positive as a cofactor. GS has a molecular mass of 350 kilodalton and is composed of 8 identical subunits. Elevated levels of glutamine stimulate the activity of glutamate synthase that is also known as glutamine 2 oxo glutarate amino transferase or GOGAT. This enzyme transfers the amide group of glutamine to 2 oxo yielding two molecules of glutamate. 
plants contain two types of gogate. One accepts electrons from NADH and the other accepts electrons from pyridoxin. Now there are alternate pathways for the ammonium assimilation. Glutamine dehydrogenase that is GDH catalyzes a reversible reaction that synthesizes or deaminates glutamate. An NADH dependent form of GDH is found in mitochondria and an NADPH dependent form is localized in the chloroplasts or of photosynthetic organs. Mitochondrial form was thought to be involved in the photorespiratory nitrogen metabolism because photoaspiration generates ammonia in the mitochondrion. However, GSR pyridoxin gogat are required for reassimilation of photorespiratory ammonia. Once assimilated into glutamine and glutamate, nitrogen is incorporated into other amino acids with transamination reactions. All transamination reactions require pyridoxal phosphate that is vitamin B6 as a cofactor. The enzymes that catalyze these reactions are known as aminotransferases. Aminotransferases are found in the cytoplasm, chloroplast, mitochondria, glyoxysomes and peroxisomes. The aminotransferases localized in the chloroplast have a significant role to play in amino acid synthesis. Dear friends, this was all about nitrogen uptake and assimilation, but before leaving, let's sum up. Today we studied the mechanism of nitrogen uptake in plants, then the biochemistry of biological nitrogen fixation, and lastly, the pathways involved in the assimilation of ammonia and nitrate in plants. Thank you and have a nice day.